this video, I am going to show you how to create EPDM backups using both the administration tool and SQL Server Management Studio. To create a backup, you can start off by opening up EPDM administration, right click on the vault, and select Collect Support Information. On the first page, there's a lot of information that can be collected using this method, but we'll deselect everything here and go to Create SQL Backup so that we only create a backup file. I've copied the path that I want to use already, and now I'm just going to paste it into this text box. This path must exist on the SQL Server. It doesn't matter if it exists on the client. Create Package allows us to specify a location to create a zip file. In my situation, the zip file and the back file will be created in the same place because my computer is acting as both server and client. But in your case, they will probably be separate and you'll have to collect it from the SQL Server and put it in that zip file. More on that later. That's it. That's all it takes to create a SQL Server backup using the EPDM administration tool. Next, I'll show you how to use the SQL Server Management Studio. Once you log in, you can expand the existing databases. You probably won't have a long list of databases like I do, but look for the one that has either EPDM underscore or PDMW underscore and then your vault name. That prefix is not set, so you may have a different name there, but the name will always match the vault name. In the options, we'll probably want to change it to overwrite existing backup sets and specify a new location. If a backup already exists, SQL Server can merge the two of them, but when you're collecting support information, you probably don't need both. So make sure that you set it to overwrite existing backups and specify a new path if necessary. Once that's done, we'll have a zip file and a back file. If you look at that zip or that back file, you'll see that it's about 17 megabytes here. But if I made one from a production vault, it would be much bigger. For example, here 1.69 gigabytes. However, if I just drag and drop that into the zip file, it will immediately compress it. You will find that backup files can be compressed by an order of magnitude using this method. So this one should reduce to around 100 megabytes or 250. So it's about six times smaller. Thank you.